Good morning, welcome to Studio 5 Going Live, day 5 of the Studio 5 online summer exhibition. Um, today we're going to be looking at Kintsugi 2, uh, which is basically a multi-sectional um, flat-back quarter-cloth case binding that I make a number of these actually. I use them as my notebooks and sketchbooks. With this particular one, uh, Kintsugi 2, it's been buried. Um, I don't do this with all the books I make, obviously, but this follows a, um, a, a process that I've been working with for a number of years now, which first started working with um, a forensic entomologist to see what would happen with books buried in particular circumstances. Um, since then, it's the uh, my thoughts and things have progressed, and now I'm treating the books more as uh, livre d'objets or book objects, beautiful structures and things in their own right. Now, kintsugi is basically, it's a, um, a Japanese technique, and the rough translation of kintsugi is Japanese joinery. It's the art of repairing uh, broken uh, ceramics by mending the areas um, with lacquer, dusted with a sort of gold powder, silver, uh, platinum, stuff like that. It's a, it's a sort of philosophy with repair, in that the repair becomes part of the history of the object, rather than something to disguise. And uh, for me, this is uh, really something else. Um, it was buried by one of my students on the southern island of New Zealand. And um, I think it was only in the ground for about two months. But during that time, it went through two earthquakes and was accidentally dug up by a, um, a gardener. Um, using a uh, traditional sort of um, gardening fork. And in the front board, we can actually see where the tines of the fork pierced the book. We'll take the um, book out of the uh, purpose-made uh, perspex, perspex uh, case and plinth so we can get a closer look at it, have an idea of the various textures and everything involved. For me, this is one of these transitional works because, for me, this spans a, a, a lot of time. Now, before everybody gets sort of, you know, sort of argue, arguing and a bit shouty about burying books, there is actually nothing new about burying books. As we know, in many, many um, cultures, if the, um, the act of destroying the book is forbidden or it's, you know, considered very bad form, so one way of getting rid of books is to leave them somewhere or indeed bury them. You haven't destroyed them um, and, you know, you can just walk away from the situation. With burying a book, you're sort of giving back to nature as well, because as we know, the majority of books that are made use natural, um, naturally found or processed materials like paper, board, cloth, etc. And indeed, you know, with beeswax used in the sewing with the sewing thread that also you know harkens back to nature but as we can see from this we can see the various textures and everything happening and it really is quite beautiful how the board has become distressed due to being buried by the grubs and everything else and there we can very clearly see a the kintsugi and of course where the garden fork tines pierce the board and indeed in this area took away a little bit of the spine um for me, I really find this quite a cathartic exercise because what one does, of course, with this and with these various textures and everything is one can um, really sort of understand the um, way nature works. And we'll just pan out there for a second. That's great. And then we'll just have a quick whip around the book 360 degrees. And it really is quite textural i mean it really is I and mean, there's no way of getting around this and again on the backboard we can see where the garden fork tines actually buckled the backboard and we can get a really good idea of that when the book arrived back in the uk um i froze it got rid of any infect insect infestation grubs larvae and that sort of thing and of course checked it for mold etc 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 so it is extraordinarily stable but where I think the magic happens with this particular book is on the inside. The way that the uh, text block pages have adhered together really does create these wonderful colours, textures. And there is indeed a sort of an aroma to it as well. And um, it's always a joy in a way to take 
these books, when I do unearth them, out of the ground and actually see what is left and how one can work with it. So it really does give a very different perspective on the book. And there we can actually just make out in the top where the garden tines went in. And I've actually highlighted that again with gold leaf. This philosophy of not hiding repairs is actually something that I, I take through with my um, some of my restoration and um, work in that with um, some clients who are a little bit more, I'm not going to say daring, but perhaps they're a little less traditional, that they uh, like their books to reflect an age to the, the, the new material that's been put in not to be hidden, not to be sort of toned in. And if I may just put this to one side for a second, and it's just to sort of carry on this philosophy, um, this is a um, book about 1880. It had seen far better days, and we can see from this that I've put a rebacking, rebacked it, and I've used a brand new leather to actually highlight that repair. Taking inspiration from the various colours that one finds in this uh, marble paper, we can see if I can just get a close up here. Corners have been repaired in different coloured leathers. We've got yellow there, green down here. Uh, we've got a dark blue on the backboard here. And again, on the top left hand board, we've got a red, which catches the colour of the marble paper. So it really is a sort of, um, you know, as as a architect would, if they are looking at an old building, they would want to put something new onto it to extend it. I suppose rather like the Ashmolean or something like that. John Ryland's library, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, in Manchester even. So there we have Kintsugi 2, uh, one of the Buried Book series. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today. Um, look forward to seeing you all tomorrow and please let's be safe. Thank you all very much indeed. Have a lovely, lovely day.